What's the best caliber when you go into big bear country? That's what we're gonna talk about today. There's been a lot of debate out there in regard to what caliber will be sufficient uh, protecting yourself against a big bear, like a grizzly, uh, brown bear, and the like. Uh, I would also just add to that just animals in the wilderness, right? So there are animals that are also large in the wilderness that might not be predatory, but they are still a danger to you, like moose. So you gotta keep these things in mind when you go out into the outdoors. Nine millimeter, 10 millimeter, 357 Magnum, like this bad boy right here, uh, 44 Magnum. These are all discussed out when people are talking about what caliber to take into the wilderness with you. And the best for me, you got to see. So I don't have a 44 Magnum anymore. I did, it was in a previous video when I talked about chest carry. Uh, I got rid of it and I purchased a 357 Magnum because I can control that much better. The thing with 44 Magnum that a lot of people are gonna have um, concerns with are follow-up shots and capacity. Capacity is six and follow-up shots with a 44 Magnum, you only get six chances uh, to put a round on target in a very stressful situation. That could be also a problem. So 44 Magnum, in my opinion, for you know just saying this is the one you have to get, a lot of people probably won't be able to shoot that effectively when they go out into the wilderness. That moves us back down to something like a 357 Magnum. I like 357 Magnum, it's much more controllable, but you're also stuck on capacity. It's also lighter. You're also stuck on capacity, so you're around six, seven, eight rounds, depending on which revolver you get, that's 357 Magnum. Now, while it does pack a nice punch and makes a nice hole, again, you're stuck on capacity. So you're six, seven, eight rounds that you're stuck with until you have to reload again. That's where the 10 millimeter comes in. So this is a Smith & Wesson 686 SSR. Same thing as a 686 for the most part. This is a Glock 20. Capacity is six on this. Capacity is 16 on this. So you got 15 in the magazine, one in the chamber. That's the main difference. As far as uh, ballistics go, these are very similar. Now what I did was I put a spreadsheet together where I could see all the different ballistics on different rounds. These are all the exact same company, the exact same round, which is the Black Cherry flat-nosed hard cast lead bullets from Underwood. So these are a plus P when it comes to 45 and nine millimeter. So we're trying to get the best round for each caliber, we're not trying to downsize a round or upsize a round and downsize a round to get them similar. We're taking the best round you can use in the wilderness from each caliber. And the nine millimeter, while I love it, you know, I carry a Glock 43X all the time. I love Glock 19s, as you can see in my different videos. But you know what, when it comes to going into big animal country, it's not really the best idea. When it comes to the ballistics on it, you're looking at a, uh, an energy of 395 uh, foot-pounds. That's not a lot of energy compared to 357 Magnum, 10 millimeter, and obviously 44 Magnum. The 45 ACP, and these are both plus P, so the nine millimeter and the 45 are plus P rounds. So yeah, that's the maximum you're gonna get out of these things. Um, at least for uh, when it comes to Underwood's uh, flat nose hard cast ammo. You're moving up to 485 foot pounds of energy, but it's coming out super slow at 925 uh, feet per second. So it's a really slow round, and that's the main problem with the 45 ACP is it, it just doesn't pack a punch like some of these other rounds do. Now the interesting thing is when you start talking about 357 Magnum versus 10 millimeter, they are extremely similar when it comes to their performance. So their velocities are 1200 and 1400 respectively, and 704 foot-pounds of energy for the 10 millimeter and 784 foot-pounds for the 357 Magnum. Sectional density, pretty similar, and the power factor, which it's in competitions, that number is used, but just for shits and giggles, the power factor is very similar as well. The difference, the main difference is with a 357 Magnum, you're only gonna be stuck at six, seven, eight rounds. But with a Glock 20, for instance, that has 10 millimeter, you're gonna have 16 rounds. So 15 in the magazine, one in the chamber. That is a huge difference, especially when these rounds are extremely similar. They're not very far off from each other when it comes to their performance. So I scoured the internet to look for data on this specific round, 220 grain, flat nose black cherry, 
ground by Underwood. And I found a good amount of research that I could use, so many different people doing tests. And here's what I found. So in a water jug test, I saw two of these. And one of them went through 13 plus water jugs and another one went through 14 plus jugs. In a gel test, it went 40 plus inches. And again, the velocity with these, it says it's 1200. Out of 15 shots that I saw across different videos of people testing the velocity, the average of all those shots was 1188. So it's very, very uh, close. You know, people get really wrapped up in like, oh, it's 20 you know, feet per second, a little bit less, so it's not really full loaded or whatever. At 20 feet per second is fine. As far, as far as an average goes, you're gonna have some over 12, you're gonna have some under 12. That's just how it rolls when it comes to things like loading ammunition. And that gets me to my next point. You have to use the proper ammunition. You have to use hard cast bullets. Why is that? If you use a hollow point, it's just going to basically, I mean, it's going to do some damage, but it's gonna stop. It's not going to penetrate. It's not gonna go through bone like a hard cast bullet will. Full metal jacket, it's just gonna break up. It's a jacketed bullet. What you want is a completely solid, hard cast bullet, like a flat nose, um, solid core, if you will. That's what Federal calls theirs. They call it solid core. Everywhere else, they just call it hard cast. But you want to have a flat nose and be hard cast. A lot of companies out there make them. I prefer Underwood and Federal. So we've talked about caliber. Let's talk about the guns a little bit. So with a semi-automatic, you can put a light on it. On a revolver, you can't put a light on it. So I'm down on capacity and I can't put a light on it, so I have to hold a light, and that's just not working for me. It's, you know, I'd rather have, like all of my Glock 19s have, a light on the front. It's already on there, you don't have to think twice. If something happens, you have the light ready to roll. That's how I like to have things done. Taking the thinking out of a stressful situation. Uh, stressful situation happens, you don't have your light near your gun, it's dawn, it's dusk, it's nighttime, you are really gonna be in a very bad situation at a huge disadvantage, um, you know, not being able to identify what is going on, um, where this threat is in the wilderness, um, around your campsite, for instance, without a light. So that's the other reason why I like the Glock 20 and similar semi-automatic 10 millimeter handguns. This one doesn't have the X300 on because I have it on order, I just picked this up. Uh, but I will be adding it so that I can run it in the exact same holster I have in my Hill People Gear kit bag. I have a video on that. Um, so that way I can use the exact same holster based off the X300 Ultra Lite. So for me, the 10 millimeter makes a lot of sense. Uh, like I said, Mrs. Burrs and I do go to Alaska from time to time. We enjoy it. Uh, we actually might be purchasing from some land up in there um, at some point. So for me, the 10 millimeter makes sense for capacity, for the ability to attach a light to it. Um, and it has pretty much the same similar uh, ballistics as a 357 Magnum, uh, which is a great round also. Um, so for me, the Glock 20 makes a ton of sense. Put down below in the comments what you have seen and what you use and what you like. And then uh, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. And until next time, later.